This is part two of a series going into all of the lore and Easter eggs hidden in Bone Lab. In part one, we covered a lot of the major Easter eggs, but in this video, I'm gonna be going over every single thing written or drawn on the menu block at the end of the game. And in addition to that, everything on the body mall and in the taxi cab. There's a lot of interesting things here. In the taxi, there's lots of stickers, most of which are references to various brands or companies that exist in the Stress Level Zero universe. Starting the top left, we see the Stress Level Zero logo, the in-universe developers, a couple of stickers for Duck Season, the video game from the 80s that was created from the Kingbit system, which was created by a company called Gammon. Gammon was a competitor to Monogon, and in Boneworks, Ford uses Gammon hardware to hack MythOS. The Llama Piñata is a reference to Final Fiesta, a fictional game series that appears in Duck Season, and the Capsule sticker is a reference to the capsules that you collect all throughout the game. Pizza Demon is the in-universe pizza brand, and we see their boxes all over the place. Moving down the stickers, we see a sticker for a tiger, which is a reference to the Triple Tiger game from Duck Season. The banana is a reference to Banana Land, the only canonical amusement park in the void. This is confirmed by Alex, and an early render of Jimmy has him wearing a Banana Land hoodie. CRISPR is a snack brand referenced on the whiteboard earlier in the game, and Jump Drops is a CRISPR gum bar that increases your natural ability to jump, which can also be found earlier in the game. The crying anime girl is Akko, the avatar used by Stress Level Zero creative director Alex. Pressure Power One is a game company from Duck Season and a play on words to the name Stress Level Zero. Below all that, we see another pizza sticker, a progression sticker, which is on the CRISPR snack vending machine earlier in the game. The WCCK radio is obviously the radio Jimmy used to talk to us. Focus is another in-universe snack brand. The cat girl here is Alex's profile picture, and I'm not exactly sure what best friends or the stick man walking sticker are references to. Next to those stickers is the taxi fare board, which is explained in my previous Bone Lab video. Next to it, we see a focus sticker, which is another CRISPR snack that boosts slow motion. The dog sticker is supposedly one of the developer's real life dogs. The SUVAT sticker is a reference to the Merrill engine, and SUVAT is specifically a math thing related to equations of motion. I'm not sure what the snake eyes or the pillar referencing, but we do see them elsewhere in the game. Saber Lake is the in-universe security company, and we see references to them in the minecart level, and they're the security company that tracks down Ford in Boneworks. There's another Gammon sticker, another Kingbit sticker, Hover Junkers is the first game Stress Level Zero ever made, the Lava sticker is a reference to the Lava Gang, obviously, and Gold Juice is a juice brand found in Duck Season. As for the sticker about the Witch House and the Void Wastes, this one actually goes pretty deep, and I'm sure we're going to see more stuff related to it revealed later on. Already in the newest Bone Lab update, there's a whiteboard where we see a witch next to the words Void Magic. The last major lore thing related to the taxi is simply all of the references to Tempest, Pennsylvania, which we can find in and outside of the taxi. I looked it up online and the only thing I could find was a media company called Tempest that's based in Pennsylvania, which probably isn't related to this. And in the latest update, there's a whiteboard that's been added that was written by a Stress Level Zero employee who knows a lot about the void, yet he writes, Tempest, Pennsylvania, no such town, suggesting that that town doesn't exist, at least not in the void. At the end of the taxi ride, we arrive at G11.4, which has a body mall and a Tesseract city box. On the outside of the body mall, there's graffiti changing the message, be a better person today, to the new message, be an anime cat girl today, which is presumably just a reference to the game's theme of being whoever you want to be, be it a cat girl or whatever. Under that, there's more graffiti, which says legalize ERP, which is a reference to erotic role-playing, which if you don't know, is something that two loving adults do together in the private rooms of VR chat. The rest of the graffiti is seemingly random words like Pema, Lick, Fix, No, 4.30 PM, No You, and Free Scorn, or Free S-C-R-N. There's also a tooth-shaped monster face, a little castle, a question mark, a word I can't really read that looks like it says G-Hunk or something, and other random drawings that I can't make sense of. On the other side of the body mall, there's this cute little creature thing peeking out. Not sure what it is, but we do see it elsewhere. And then there's also the symbol for X on the bottom. Moving on from the body mall, we get to the city block, which also has a ton of graffiti. As explained in my last video, the box itself is a self-contained city. On the bottom, there's a whole bunch of random components that you would want to have in a virtual city, including a resurrection field, a reference to a huge plot element in Boneworks. The resurrection field is how you respawn every time you die. Unlike other games, you respawn with whatever you did previously having still occurred. For example, the enemies that you already killed are still dead when you respawn. This is because you're respawning, you're resurrecting back into the simulation exactly how you left it. There's also some city light settings, and I've been told that these are the settings you use in Unity when you're designing a level for Bone Lab. Next to the city light settings, there's a goblin 
demon looking thing holding a sword, and across from that a hot air balloon flying over some mountains. On the first side of the city block we see the title Alive 2, and the most defining features are the wizard and the castle. Starting from the top we see a monkey reaching for a moon and underneath it the words Lost Life. This could be a reference to the sock monkey cryptid. In the very top right we see fat written in fat bold letters. Under that is the word wow, and under that we see a quote attributed to Thomas Jefferson that reads, Ikaruga was the best game ever made. Ikaruga, and I hope I'm saying that right, is a game made from 2001 that looks pretty similar to the classic Galaga. I'm guessing the devs just really like this game. Just above the wizard, we see loop written in big letters, which could be related to Boneworks theories about how the whole game is just a series of time loops. Under that is Smooth Step 15. Apparently, Smooth Step is a function used in computer graphics. I couldn't tell you what it does, but it looks pretty cool. Below that, the word flip with a running stick figure. To the right of that, we see Akko written, which is another reference to Alex's avatar. To the left of the wizard staff is Japanese kanji that means romantic love. On top of the wizard is written the question, is this Gandalf? And biting into the wizard's arm is a cute monster. And there's a speech bubble coming out of the wizard that says melon. The wizard is holding a skull with red rays coming out of it. Below that is a laughing face. And next to the laughing face is a straight face and the words, there was never a P4, which is a reference to Project 4. I'm really not sure how to interpret this along with a message earlier in the game saying that Project 4 was cancelled. To the right of the wizard we see Lava Gang written, and next to that is a silly face and the cringy early 2000s catchphrase, RAR. I guess now we know what generation the devs are from. Below that is the same Pokemon looking creature from the Body Mall, along with two arrows pointing in opposite directions. And to the left of that it looks like there's a skull on a pike. On top of that is some cursive I can't quite make out. The letters D, T, and a ladder. Underneath all that it says no no, followed by an answer key that's written upside down that provides answers to six true or false or multiple choice questions. The questions that this answer key goes to aren't anywhere to be found. And when asked about it, Alex said that endgame stuff like this is usually relevant to future games. And I'm sure most of the graffiti here is just references to future games that will make more sense as new games come out. Moving on, on the bottom half of the wizard is a girl making squinty eyes with her apparently saying psh. She also has a heart next to her. And below the girl is a cute three-eyed monster. This could be related to the three-eyed tiger we saw in the taxi, which was related to the fictional video game in Duck Season. Moving on to the castle, we see Arthur was here, which is further proof that Arthur made it to the void at the end of Boneworks. This could be implying also that Arthur is at the castle, wherever that castle is. If this castle is the same one that was in Fantasyland, then it's possible that this isn't proof he made it into the void, but just someone pointing out that he made it to the castle in Fantasyland. But I think that's a stretch. I think it's pretty clear that Arthur made it to the void. Next to the castle, it says Our City. Also next to the castle's tower is a symbol for X, which could mean that X is there at that castle, but there's like a sharp jagged semicircle surrounding the castle tower and red spewing out of that. And this could be implying energy or light coming out of the tower. In the red we see the word last chance and outside of the red we see the word warning. Below that we see a face that looks like a snake face because of the diamond, the slit nose, and the eyes. Below that is the phrase, somewhere above the birds a red dragon enters heaven. This could explain the red coming out of the castle which could be related to a red dragon. To the right of that is another phrase written, like a forgotten king eternal. This could be a reference to Arthur Ford who became king of Fantasyland then went on to become eternal in the void. If you combine these two messages and take the first letters out, it spells out Saber Lit, the security company that appears in Boneworks and is referenced earlier in Bone Lab. Moving on to the bottom left of this side is a message that says no cryptids. Below that there's a smiley face and the message no more metaverses, obviously a reference to meta and Zuckerberg. Next to the smiley face is written, please build a ball pit. Below that is an Easter egg, like a literal Easter egg, a flower and the words free scorn, which is something that we also saw written on the body mall. There's a rain cloud raining on the word gun and a drawing that I can't really make sense of. In this area, we see the words pant, soup, sick, flow, smelly, and think. And we see lots of different smiley faces. There's also some words that I can barely read, but look like they say box, locks, or des. There's a drawing of a cake, which we'll see again elsewhere, and there's also a small house and some stick figures. It says here, Mars exists, and then there's a drawing of a NASA Land Rover, and next to that is a drawing of a plant growing out of the ground. Moving up, we see some music notes with the title Portobello Road, which is a song from the Disney musical Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. Above that is a scripture from Genesis that reads, your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out into the void. Now, obviously, the original scripture didn't say void. It actually says north, east, west, south, just, you know, spreading out in all directions. But here, that was all replaced with just
just one word, void. Speaking of scriptures, G11.4, the name of the city box, is confirmed to be a reference to Genesis 11 verse 4, which reads, Let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. One last detail on this side of the city block is that we see arrows being shot from where it says no cryptids towards the wizard. This could mean something like the cryptids attacking the wizard, but I'm not sure. Moving on to the next side of the city box is the side titled Blight 12, with the most defining feature being a space woman looking up at a three-headed demon holding some sort of orb. Starting at the bottom right, we see a sort of sigil with a battle axe and a sword. Next to the sigil is a stress level zero logo, a bird, and the Roman numerals for two. Below the sigil is a mountain range with a minecart pointed towards the mountains, and to the left of the minecart is written Jupiter. To the right of the sigil is the word sleep with some Z's coming out of it. We see written climb up, and there's actually several instances of the city box telling us to go up to the top, which we will later. Above the climb up message, there's a note nailed in that says no, and someone wrote time to bring back Mega Mersion, which is a reference to the current Myth City drink Ultra Mersion. The space woman's helmet is half filled with water, and on her cheek is written pirate, implying that she's some sort of pirate. We also see written on her helmet, polyblank and VR. Written on her shoulder is a message, I think dogs should vote, and a small house is next to that. Also on her shoulder are some small cubes with the word sight. And below that word is something that's very difficult to read. It could say something like Amanda, which could possibly be her name. To the bottom left is some tick marks and a word that's really hard to read above that that maybe says how. Next to that is a tooth looking thing. And above that is a drawing titled VHS Skeleton. Above that is a message, let's have a party, along with some hearts and a block of cheese. Above that is a fork with the word crunch and what looks like a castle tower maybe. Above that fork is the pizza demon mascot along with the word pizza, a lava lamp, and some dice. Above that is a bottle of something with the word stupid written next to it. And we also see a plus sign and a weird arrow pointing to a taxi car. Above the taxi, there's a crown and above that is the words get in. The license plate for the taxi also says get in. Moving on to the three headed demon, we see the word tricky written on the left side. And between the demon and the girl is the word foss. P-H-O-S. The only thing I could figure out is that Foss is a snail genus, and I'm not sure how that's relevant. Below the orb the demon is holding is the message, I miss the boy Mare. To the bottom of the demon is the message, Jeremy was here, and Stress Level Zero has a software developer named Jeremy, so this could be a reference to him. To the right in blocky letters is the word block, and next to that the word physics with an arrow pointing down. Above that is a barrel of slime with the word slime. Next to the demon is a message, WTF is this. Next to the orb the demon is holding is the affinity symbol, and we also see the infinity symbol above its head. To the right of the demon is another drawing of a cake, this time with the message, cake is hard truth. This is a reference to portal, and the cake is a lie meme. Next to the right antler horn thing is the word crown, and the Roman numerals that stand for the date of February 10th, 2022. And I'm honestly not sure what's significant about this date. If you do, let me know. Next to the left antler, it says 500s, another reference to Akko, a dagger, a clock, a half pipe, and the word void. To the far left of the antler, we see a radioactive symbol, a DNA strand with CRISPR next to it, referencing the in-game snack brand, and above that, a cute little squid thing. Moving on to the top side, to the left of the G, we see a rocket ship going up, a tooth, another dagger, and a monkey climbing the G. Above the G is the message, yet another new moon, with a confused girl drawn next to that. Inside the G is a pill, a smiley face, a snail moving up the G, which could be related to the Foss snail genus reference from before. There's also a submarine moving towards some sort of radio thing that's putting out some sort of signal. Between the G and the first one, we see a leaf, the one dripping out something, some upside down crosses, and a message that says Jadez was here. I'm not sure who Jadez is, but I did find a VR chat streamer named Jadez. Not even sure if I'm saying that right, but she could have something to do with this. Between the ones, we see the word fun repeated three times. Below that, a cup that's either half full or half empty, depending on how you see it. A spotted mountain and the word hello. Above the ones is a cube that says airdrop, the words no no, no again, cool studio number five, and a one-eyed alien in front of some other aliens. Next to the number four is a ladder, a cloud, a checkered flag, some glasses, and a stick figure. We also see old myth written next to what looks like a design
sign for a level. Another word I can't read is next to that, starting with the letters ISO, and the next to that word is VR. Above all of that is the words how to make, and next to that is the phrase we need more popcorn. We also see just a single word weird written here. The final side of the city box has much less graffiti and only a single drawing of a scuba diver or spaceman shining a light onto a giant tentacle monster. Next to the yellow person is X's symbol, implying that this is or represents X. Some speculate that this symbolizes X's role to shine light on cryptids to help and protect us. On that same side on the bottom, there's some last bit of graffiti in a really hard to see spot behind some pipes. Here is the title Cult 5, and the most defining feature is the knights. This has a list of animals, supposedly cryptids, which is monkey, cat, dog, box, light, spider, haunt, eye, and hydra. Below that is some mushrooms, and next to the mushrooms are different types of waves often used in synthesizers. To the left of that is a pie. Farther to the left is two stick figures that look like they're shooting each other. To the far left, it says nobody asks mathematicians the meaning of existence. Below that is some sort of leaves or some sort of plant, and the words save blind. There's also a sword here, a terrified ghost face or something, the word five, a slimy monster thing, the words I'm sleepy and cute. Above the cult five title is the message what a funny world. And above the knights, there's some random drawings that I can't really make sense of. The last side is the very top side. Remember all of those messages telling us to look up? The most defining message here is the thanks for playing left there by the real life stress level zero developers. Next to that is a burger and a mushroom, which is possibly a reference to the mushroom sticker with the witch house in the void waste. There's an old school TV, a graph of some sort, a cactus, and the message somewhere out there. Possibly referencing aliens, because above that is a UFO abducting a stick figure and a cube. And then the final, most important clues to the B-side, a reference to the major update, new game, or DLC that they want to release, and then also the Machine King logo, rumored to possibly be the next game in the series. Phew, that was a long one. Now the goal of presenting this to you is to help research everything. Obviously, I don't know what everything means, but presented here is an easier to digest format of everything written. And it's my hope that while you were watching this, maybe something clicked for you. Maybe you figured out how one thing connected to another or something like that. And if you do figure something out, please be sure to let us know in the comments or in my Discord. As more stuff gets revealed and as you help me decipher all of this, I plan on making another video explaining what we all collectively learned working together. If that interests you, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.